And that is the criminal sin that you can't commit when you're making a Wellington. It is a criminal sin. Yeah, it's a technical term. So good. Brothers and sisters, do you remember the epic Best Beef Wellington in the World video from a while back? There's going to be a few moves with this, but I'm going to take all the wisdom from that video and show you how to make a Beef Wellington from A to Z. So, first up, we need to sear this beef fillet. So what you're doing is you're searing it super quick, just because we just want the colour on the outside, and then that's it, let's get it off. Next up, we're making a duck cell. Now, Callum just uses button mushrooms. I'm gonna take the risk of amping it up a little bit with some shiitake. So 50-50, I've diced them down, and I'm gonna make a duck cell with that, which is basically shallots and mushrooms sauteed down. You can put other things in there, but I'm gonna keep it super simple, just the shallots, cook down a little bit of butter with the mushrooms. Let's do it. Is there anything better than onions and mushrooms just sautéed simply in a pan? Like, that tastes so good. We've got to get the moisture out of this. So into a cloth, put it through, and we're going to wring out the moisture. Now look at the amount of moisture that's come out of those mushrooms. And if you don't get that out now, that's going to end up hitting your pastry and making it soggy. And that is the criminal sin that you can't commit when you're making a Wellington. It is a criminal sin. Yeah, it's a technical term. Now, turn your mushroom and onion duck cell mixture out onto a chopping board and look how dry that is now. So, let's chop it up. And you know you're at the right consistency when it starts clumping together, almost like a meatball. Now completely encase the fillet in the duck cell. Once you've got the duck cell encased around the mustard brushed fillet, then it's time to get the spinach on there. And then you take off the stalk element of it and just follow it all the way through until it just peels away, because that's, that's quite tough. And what you're left with is essentially spinach wallpaper to paste around your beef wellington. And this is what you're left with. I put kitchen roll on the top and kitchen roll underneath. I pressed it down until I knew that the spinach was completely dry. And what you've got is, you've got all the freshness, you've got the zinginess of the greenness of that spinach, but it's dry. So it means that it's not going to bleed moisture into the pastry when you're putting it in the oven. Spinach, after all, is something like 90% water, so you've got to get that moisture out. This is just one of those things you have to do. There's no shortcuts here. Next up, we've got our crepes that we're going to wrap the Wellington in. Now, these are essentially egg and flour tarpaulin that you're gonna wrap around to lock in all the moisture, so you want to try and create it so it's watertight. Now I'm going to get it onto some cling film and we're going to wrap it up nice and tight so everything rests and forms into a nice cylindrical beef sausage of beef wellington love. So I'm just creating the cling film to just wrap round and I'm creating tension to just get it super tight. We just need to leave that in the fridge for 24 hours for it to set. Puff pastry obviously is what you use for a beef wellington, but you need to make sure that you use a vegetable puff pastry, not an all butter puff. I'm gonna get this out, roll it out, and then get the beef fillet into it. Mm -hmm. 
Right, I've got my fillet. It's been resting all day so that everything just sets around it. I've got my puff pastry rolled out. I need to get some egg wash, and just egg wash that over and then put the fillet in. Remember, Callum's Wellington is all about precision. So I'm just gonna trim this down and then get it on. So you want to pick it up, move it across and drop it on. Now I'm going to lift the pastry at the back and stick it to the back of the Wellington. This is where we need to create the tension in the pastry so it wraps on tight. So it's almost like you're pulling and rolling over. So now we're gonna close these ends down. So I just bring it in, push down and just cut. Finish it off with the egg wash. So now I'm gonna take the lattice cutter that I got earlier and I'm just gonna run it over, but just like Callum showed us, I'm just gonna use it as a marker and then I'm gonna cut through with a knife. Trying to replicate Callum's recipe at home is really, really hard. That's why I've gone for ready rolled, um, not all butter puff pastry, um, but this just really shows the level of detail that they go to at Holwyn dining rooms. Like I'm, this is taking forever. There's no way I would do this at home. If, in real honesty, I just run the lattice cutter straight through it, which is what I wish I'd done. Yeah. And we're just going to open that lattice out a little bit. So now I'm going to just trim the lattice down and just get it on. Like, this doesn't look too bad, but I know Callum will just be like, yeah, that's not right, and that's not right, and look at that bit over there, and tsh, tsh, tsh. But, like, listen, for making one at home, I'm dead happy. I'm gonna put a little bit of egg wash over with a fine brush, and then tsh, I'm getting it in. What we're gonna do now is use a heat temperature probe to probe the core of the fillet. Once it hits 30, I can pull it out, and then the core temperature, the residual heat, will rise up to something like sort of 45, 50, and that means medium rare. Okay, that's just over 30, which is perfect. Let's get it out. No soggy bottom. That's such a massive triumph. Yes! Oh, mate, I gotta be honest, like this is, this is probably one of the most difficult things I've ever attempted because to get it to that standard, you know, anybody can wrap a piece of beef in some mushrooms and wax some pastry around it. Getting it just right, you know, hopefully Callum won't slap me around the face and like put me on washer. Okay, so I got what? Half an hour before Callum turns up, Beef Wellington's in, and I'm nervous. <laughs> what am I doing? So you cut it, and then, and then three or four minutes later, it's pinker than it was, and I guess that's because yeah. it oxidizes, right? That looks good. So that's not too bad. It's nice and crispy on the bottom. Like that feels like actually, if you're if you're doing a beef Wellington at home and you can get that, I think that's probably a good thing. But just the fact that you can pick it up like that and it's holding together is a big deal as well. Okay, don't watch me with this. Okay, go, go, <laughs> go. It's important with a beef Wellington to take a big piece, is it, mm. Callum? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel the whole man. <laughs> Earthy flavours, beef, spinach, mushroom. It's perfect. Honestly, I'd be really happy with that. Like I think, for, I mean, for me, we we yeah we put a bit more duxelle in there. I put quite a lot because I like it when that comes out into the gravy and sort of makes it almost like a mushroom gravy. And you can see maybe where there's like a the pastry is a little thicker in places. Yes. But that's just something that's like practice. Do you know yes. I mean? So if you just do this every day yes. for a few years, 
then you'll be alright, you know. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's <laughs> like it's like like this is the second ever beef Wellington I've ever made, right? And mm. it's like it was. That's it, a very good attempt for a second ever beef Wellington. Very thank good you, chef. That that's <laughs> thanks, mate. See ya. <laughs> That's a big deal for me, man. That is a big deal. He, uh, he didn't masquer it. I think he liked it. He said he did. So if you want to make a beef wellington, then go no further. This is 100% the recipe to follow. Forget all the other ways of doing it. This guy is going to nail it. Um, yeah, Chef Callum. He liked it. That's enough for me, brothers and sisters.